Before we start today's show, I want to invite you to stick around to listen to a new podcast that premieres on September 16th. As the cannabis industry's only podcast network, we provide a safe platform for all cannabis voices to spread their uncensored message to the world. And that's why we're really excited about our newest show, The Chronic Insomnia Podcast. Join former Marine and insomniac Jack Pot and his guests as they discuss a range of cannabis topics that impact our military, our veterans, and you. But uh, there has been some research, particularly University of Lethbridge up in Canada, shows that the CBD is able to inhibit this particular enzymatic pathway that the COVID virus uses to gain entry into the cell does seem that CBD is able to inhibit uh, or up to about 70% of the access pathways that this COVID virus is using to gain entry into the cell. From MJ Bulls Media, it's the Raising Cannabis Capital Show. Today in Raising Cannabis Capital, we are joined by Dr. Stuart Titus from Medical Marijuana, Inc. Dr. Titus, welcome to the show. Well, it's great to be on. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm so glad to finally have you on the show. We've known each other for a long time. Medical Marijuana, Inc. was an exhibitor at my first cannabis trade show back in 2014, and you've been a speaker <laughs> at almost every one since. For our listeners, Medical Marijuana, Inc., was the first publicly traded cannabis company in America, the very first publicly traded ca- cannabis company in America. And it trades under symbol MJNA. That's MJNA. There are very few companies that have had a greater impact on the cannabis industry. We need 10 shows to cover everything that you've accomplished just over the last decade plus. So to keep within our time, I want to focus today's discussion on CBD. Most people would agree that Medical Marijuana Inc. started the CBD craze. And (laughs) I know it's a long story, but can you give us the cliff notes on what it took to get the first CBD products to market? Well, it was certainly a great uh, challenge to be able to bring a nutraceutical or nutritional supplement form of hemp-based CBD to U.S. and world markets. So certainly we had thought this would possibly be a tremendous uh, dietary or nutritional supplement for individuals. But the entire process was uh, quite extensive. We really started in 2007 uh, working with uh, some farmers over in the European community where hemp was uh, legal to be grown. And that certain parts of the hemp plant, particularly the hemp stalk itself, could be utilized for industrial purposes and thus taken off the field. So getting the, the right source, country, farmers, laws, etc., to go through this undertaking was certainly uh, something we worked on for many years. But after four crop cycles in the year 2011, particularly the fall when we got near harvest time, we thought we had a high enough concentration of CBD in this hemp crop to potentially be useful and went ahead and did our harvest and then took the harvested hemp over to the extraction facility. And just like you got olive oil from olives, uh, we got a nice a CBD rich hemp oil. And once we had this, then we had to develop import export regulations to take this CBD paste, if you will, from mm-hmm. Europe back to the US where we could potentially work with it to make final products and formulations. Oh so we went through a lot of import export regulatory issues. We wound up fitting our product more into the hemp food category, and hemp foods in the U.S. had been legal since 2004, and we eventually wound up making finished products. We, again, fit our products into this hemp food category, and because we were extracting from the non-scheduled parts of the plant in particular, we felt we were legal in all 50 states. So Mm -hmm. we were the first ones to really come out with product that we considered and promoted as legal in all 50 U.S. states. But when we started to market and sell products in the spring of 2012, and there wasn't any federal interference with interstate shipment, the industry really was born. 
So, so this is what is a five year journey from 2007 to 2012 before the product was actually available to customers. That's crazy. Right, right. So That's it's crazy. really been uh, wonderful to see the market develop over time. And uh, you know, now yeah. we've uh, certainly been in uh, the market arena for about eight years. We've really seen some uh, tremendous growth, you know, not only here in the U.S., but also around the globe. Oh, for sure. Like I said, you were a driving force behind CBD in the United States. But you're also at the forefront in other countries. So let's talk about some of the other countries where you have subsidiaries or where you distribution networks? Yes, we have a wonderful number of subsidiaries. Our hemp meds sales division has operations in both uh, Brazil as well as in Mexico. We have a wonderful medical group down in uh, Brazil. The regulatory authority has seen such a great benefit. Many doctors are also now being able to write uh, prescriptions for additional uses, uh, things such as chronic pain or fibromyalgia, Parkinson's, a few other neurological conditions. And been uh, over six years in existence and certainly uh, done a, a great job moving towards product registration. Hemp Meds Mexico was founded in uh, February of 2016. Here, the government of Mexico could see the benefit of CBD, yet many of our products contained a trace amount of THC. And thus, the government of Mexico being very adverse to THC with the drug wars, the cartel violence, etc., really challenged them to develop a fully THC-free version of CBD and mentioned that if we could do so, that likely this would get approval. Well, we worked on this in the fall of 2015 quite extensively with our laboratory uh, technicians. And by the Christmas time, turn of the year 2016, we actually had a product that was being tested. It was proved, and certainly this was wonderful to have a fully THC-free version that was approved in the country of Mexico, again, by doctor prescription, but for the young children with the epileptic seizure disorders. I uh, utilized this concept with our Canaway direct sales, a multi-level marketing channel, and in the November of 2017, we opened our products to the European community. Here we uh, sell just THC-free products. It's been uh, wonderful to see the great uh, reception we've had in the European community. And more recently, we've had good success in operations in the country of Japan and just starting uh, some marketing efforts in the country of Vietnam. And we're seeing many people just with their anecdotal stories getting some great health and wellness benefits. And so everyone from just the average person to professional sport athletes are really seeing some great benefit by taking CBD products. Attention Cannabis Podcast listeners, you can now listen to your favorite cannabis podcast ad-free with the MJ Bulls mobile app. Just download the free MJ Bulls mobile app to your smartphone to start enjoying cannabis podcasts with no commercials. Go to Apple Apps or Google Play to get the MJ Bulls cannabis podcast app today. Well, you just are leading me right into my next question, and that is, You can't have a conversation with anybody in this industry where eventually the conversation doesn't turn to, can cannabis help with the COVID virus? There's no one better equipped to answer this question, so I'm going to put you on the spot. Can (laughs) cannabis help with COVID? Yes, there has been uh, some uh, very nice uh, early research uh, showing that there is a potential benefit. Of course, your uh, cannabinoids, and particularly uh, CBD, seems to have a wonderful effect to bolster the body's uh, immune system. But uh, there has been some research, particularly University of Lethbridge up in Canada, shows that the CBD is able to inhibit this particular enzymatic pathway that the COVID virus uses to gain entry into the cell. It does seem that CBD is able to inhibit uh, or up to about 70% of the access pathways that this COVID virus is using to gain entry into the cell. So that's been the the first bit of research showing some nice potential benefit for CBD. And additional research has been done over in Israel. What they've found is that CBD, through its inflammatory properties, has been able to alleviate this cytokine storm, if you will, that happens with the advanced stage of patients. And here, basically, uh, CBD's anti-inflammatory properties, particularly if it's combined with terpenes, seems to work between two and three times better 
than the traditional pharmaceutical approach. So two really nice pieces of research. Certainly, we're looking very much forward to supporting additional study and research on this. And uh, I think certainly there is some really nice potential uh, benefit. Well, I'm sure there are some listeners out there right now that are regular CBD users and are, are feeling good about themselves because if nothing else, it's it's given them a little shield against this virus. And and if there's people out there that are doing some research, I'm sure Dr. Titus would love to speak with you. Medical Marijuana Inc. has so many resources at their disposal that could be real, really helpful, I'm sure. We do have a couple of uh, divisions that are in pharmaceutical development, so certainly uh, they're looking at this, uh, particularly our Axon Biotechnologies Group. And they've been working to develop a, a rapid test mechanism where they'd actually be able to take uh, someone's blood, just a little finger prick, and within 10 minutes allow you to see if you have what are called COVID-neutralizing antibodies in your system which just means that you're able to produce the necessary antibodies within you to be able to fight off infection. So uh, certainly we're excited about some of the work that uh, Axum is doing, not necessarily related to CBD, but certainly trying to address this COVID uh, situation. Wow. Well, we just wish you the best with all your research and everything that you've done. And and again, thank you for arguably introducing to the world CBD. I know how much it's helped a lot of people. And I will have all of his contact information and information about medical marijuana stock symbols in the show notes at mjbulls.com. Dr. Titus, we have to schedule another interview because we just scratched the surface of all the things that I'd like to talk to you about today. So, But thank you for being on today's show. Certainly uh, great to have the opportunity, and uh, certainly uh, thank you very kindly for helping me share the message. show is made possible by the generous support of our sponsors, like Alt36, the country's premier blockchain payment processing platform that's providing dispensaries and its customers with a safe and secure payment option other than cash. To learn more, go to alt36.com. Warning, the host of this podcast has a penchant for the pontification of puns and an altruistically alienating affection for alliteration. If you suffer a weak constitution or get annoyed easily, you may want to seek prior medical advice. Or avoid this particularly perplexing pod podcast as the host is unbalanced as a washer full of shoes. When you've memorized every infomercial line by line, it's probably time to rethink your life. And so, the Chronic Insomnia Podcast was born. I'm Jack Pot, your docent of dope. And the Chronic Insomnia takes an intimate look at the often misunderstood world of mental disorders by giving a voice to those who understand all too well just what it is to live with them and the impact that the cannabis industry has made on issues that affect almost half of the Americans 18 and up and one in four people in the world. Interviews with everyone from medical professionals, industry professionals, service members and patients, legislators, and even you. So tune in, choke up, and think about it. Chronic Insomnia Podcast. Wake up. Mm-hmm.